Fantastic. Welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. Roll out our top 12 for the month going into April. This uh, value proposition has changed. It certainly has. You're going to see a mix up in this list. I'll highlight some of the sectors I feel like are overvalued as we work through this list. For full disclosure, I do use a fair, fair market uh, tool, an evaluator uh, that was uh, incepted by a couple of gents that were a hell of a lot smarter than me. Uh, it is called Trefus. It is a proprietary tool um, that is available to uh, users of the Merrill platform through Bank of America. Um, so this is where some of the uh, numbers that I discuss and disclose to you guys. Uh, secondary, I own 11 out of 12 of these, okay? The one stock pick that I did, uh, it made the list based on uh, fair market valuation and is still a good buy. Um, I, I sold prematurely and now I'm kicking myself. I'll highlight that pick as we work through the list here. But you guys gonna enjoy starting at number one here, Google, as big tech has kind of fallen out of favor. The search engine of things, Google fair market value here at 2160 represents about an implied upside of a, just over 20%. Um, so implied upside here is anywhere from 11 all the way up to around 30%. You guys are going to understand and see that some of the value propositions have fallen off. Altria Group being one of those just to earmark a few. Some of the stocks that have made my list previously, had you entered into uh, uh, positions in those and they found uh, places in your portfolio, you've done well. You've made money. Um, I don't track that stuff. I don't, I don't to get on YouTube and toot my own horn about, about stocks that go up. That's silly. Um, but um, some good quality names here, some good quality stuff that didn't make the list as well. Um, but, uh, you know, Lockheed Martin has previously been on the list. It didn't make it this time. Um, but Google and big tech followed uh, right behind with Amazon. Amazon, probably one of the best picks on the list. I'm happy to own the stock here. Absolutely implied just shy of $4,000 at 3946 implied upside of 27.5. Guys, if you've ever wanted to take a position in some of these large transformational companies, right? They don't give you opportunities very often, okay? Um, so you need to look at opportunities like this and say, well, is tech falling off a cliff? Are companies like Amazon and Google going away? The answer is no, they're not. They're just providing a, a rotation opportunity. Um, some folks like me are holding true through the downturn. I'm completely fine with that. I'll look to take strategic buy-ups as I have in Google, not Amazon specifically, um, through this. And the one stock that I don't own on the list here is financials, but it is the best bargain out of financials, and it is BlackRock, Okay. BlackRock is BLK, implied upside of just over 10%. It's run up nicely here, sitting at about 750, just a little over. But unlike some of its counterparts in the space, Bank of America and Wells Fargo specifically being overvalued here, um, they are. You would be kind of careful getting into this value uh, trap or, or proposition. I don't think they're presenting traps just yet, but with the rotation to value, they've run up fairly quick. And with value stocks, you know, three, four, five, six percent of a run up is pretty significant move in, in some of these names that don't move very quick and don't move very fast very often. They sl slowly go up over time. So you want to be careful trying to rush into some of these value plays. Um, that um, that have been in in favor here as of late. Okay, next on the list, Alibaba, uh, implied at three twenty three, implied upside here, the largest of the group in the forty percent, forty two point three. Um, Alibaba, a lot a lot like Google, and a lot like one other pick that I'm gonna uh, earmark here on the list is like shooting fish in a barrel. This is e easy stuff. Uh, Alibaba is easy to justify here in the discretionary space. Get you some. Uh, exposure there. It does for me round out uh, a, a rather difficult space for me to fill uh, and discretionary gets it done. Next is salesforce.com, ticker symbol CRM, implied at 276. I believe the stock is trading in the low 200s right here, um, but uh, representing an upside here of over 30% and, and it will make it. I believe the stock Based on its earnings projection, but will, will be a doubler in five years. Um, love to own the space. Premier cloud computing um, for everything consumer relations management software. The next three on the list, honestly, I could just earmark the entire sector. Okay, CVS did not make the list. 
nor did Johnson and Johnson, which I feel is best in breed. Okay. But healthcare is a buy all the way across the board. Now there's a few selective, you got to be kind of careful with, okay. But the next three um, made the list easy money, Merck, Pfizer, and Bristol Myers Squibb. I own all three. Um, they've run back with a vengeance. Uh, Pfizer being probably the most discounted out of the name, Merck with the most implied upside here uh, at $99 fair market value, uh, implied upside of close to 30%. This, these are silly numbers. Valuations on these uh, have, have really been recessed. And I think from a sector perspective, healthcare is number one on the list. Um, I throw big, big cap tech in the list, I do, but you've got to be selective with that group as well. Uh, as I do feel like um, some of the darlings of the tech sector, especially Apple and IBM and Intel are probably those that you might want to stay away from. And, and some companies more along the lines of a Cisco or a Visa, you might want to, to, to gravitate to. All right. Uh, but uh, Pfizer, Bristol Myers, and Merck round out that all implied upside of around uh, in between 25 and 30 percent here on the list. So um, really, those stocks that you could buy and hold forever can't really go wrong. I own them all. What can I say? Fantastic companies. Um, the number one buy on the list here, hands down, which is run up as of late, is Facebook. Um, Facebook in the big tech category implied value at 360. It's undervalued here. Um, and it has been for, for a long, long time, many months, even going on years. I know the pandemic low gave you a really interesting uh, um, entry into the stock, but not a whole lot of people were racing to buy stock there. They should have, uh, but they didn't. Um, they they would have caught that really good entry into Facebook. Um, if I remember correctly, but an implied upside here of just over 20% in Facebook. Next on the list in the discretionary space, another sector that's tough to fill is McDonald's. But McDonald's has got a nice implied upside of around 15%. Fair market is just shy of 250, 257 or just over at 257. Um, in big tech, where Apple's not the buy, Microsoft is, okay, Mr. Softy. It's provided here this rare entry. And again, like some of these other names, they don't provide you this entry uh, very often. So you want to pounce on these names that are cornerstones in the portfolio. You can grab them, you can own them, and never sell them. Um, you're getting your entry. Are you getting your optimal entry? Well, I don't know. If you're looking for optimal entry, you've come to the wrong place. I'm just telling you that these companies are ones that I'm happy to own myself and ones that if you are void of owning, um, I think you can probably justify a position in the portfolio uh, for all these names, especially Microsoft. And last but not least on the list here uh, is Disney in telecom communications. Fair market value puts it at about 205, not getting a heck of a good buy here at only an implied upside of about 11.1%. But under, undervalued nonetheless, it has sold off in the last couple days of market volatility. And Disney is providing you, at least as it comes down in price, a better entry if you've ever wanted to gain some exposure. Maybe supplement your existing holdings in Verizon and AT&T uh, in the telecom communication space. Really hope you appreciated this exhaustive list. Top 12 going into April, guys, as always, do your own due diligence. Uh, as I've disclosed, I own 11 out of 12 of these. Um, the data and analytics that I do provide is a proprietary of Bank of America Merrill, which is the Trefis tool, which helps me understand fair market value. Um, really, you want to make your own decisions. Not all of these stocks are going to work for all visitors to the Independent Investor Channel. Um, if it fits into your portfolio and you can uh, justify some sector exposure, these are the areas of emphasis to look. And, and I've earmarked some areas where you might want to stay away from as well uh, as this volatility heats up in the stock market. And we continue on this uh, rotation that we've got um, going from large tech that has run up aggressive growth, the SPAC space, um, and finding its home in other areas of the stock market. Guys, if you appreciate the information, make sure and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video and share the message. 
with those folks out there that you know uh, might appreciate my uh, value-oriented aspect as these do change every month. Um, these are entertaining. These are some of the most popular videos uh, I make. Um, I put my money where my mouth is as I own the lion's share of all of these. I uh, don't want to come on and be a poser. Uh, I am a stock investor and a wealth builder myself looking to share my story with you guys. Thank you so much for tuning into the video and good luck in your investment future.